Hey guys, so I know it's really rare that you see my face. Um, I'm still a little bit uncomfortable doing this, but I am going to try to do it a little bit more. We'll see how that goes. But um, you guys have been waiting for this for a long time. You asked me questions like a month ago and I've been meaning to do a Q&A video and I just, I've been so busy. I just haven't had the time. But so today's video, I'm gonna be answering all the questions that you guys asked me on Instagram, on YouTube and on Facebook like a month ago. I'm going to break this video out into three sections, planning questions, personal questions, and then questions about YouTube, Instagram, and the Happy Planner Squad. So here we go. Okay, so the first question is from Lina Plans on Instagram. How long have you been planning? And then I got three other people asking me pretty much the same question. Um, I started planning in January, 2018. It was at a time in my life when things were going very badly. If you're not a regular subscriber to my channel, you may not know, uh, my husband passed away from ALS and at in January 2018 I had quit my job and I was a full-time caregiver for him Things were at an all-time low you guys like it was bad if you've ever taken care of someone who's terminally ill Especially somebody with ALS You'll know what I mean. Um, I was physically exhausted. I was emotionally exhausted It was just a really bad time in my life and I had purchased a plum paper planner in December of 2017 because I wanted to get organized. I There were so many things involved, like he was uh, a veteran, so there was a lot of paperwork involved with the VA and a lot of insurance stuff and, um, and just stuff having to do with his care. So I really wanted to keep track of it all and be able to like organize myself better. And I've always kind of been a planner person. I always start planners, never finished them, never kept it up. Um, but I always liked the idea of paper planners anyway. So I decided to buy a plum paper planner. I hadn't heard of the happy planner. Um, plum paper planner, I bought that because it was customizable and I wanted to like create my own type of planner. So I bought that and then once I got it, I was overwhelmed because it was so big and I wanted to figure out how to like organize it and stuff. So I went on YouTube and I watched videos on how to organize your planner into sections and all that kind of stuff. And then somehow I ended up on videos about stickers and I was like, what? Like my mind was just blown. I had no idea this was a hobby. And you guys, I was a scrapbooker back in the 90s and uh, like I've always loved lists. So as soon as I found out this was a hobby, I thought, why didn't I hear of this before? Like this is like me in a nutshell. Like this is 100% perfect for me. So I went out, I bought some stickers. I got, I think my first happy planner value packs were the rainbow one and watercolor and i started putting stickers down i was terrible my first few spreads were absolutely terrible <laughs> um but i got better and i started an instagram in february of 2018 uh because i found the that people had planner Instagrams and like they were posting pictures with their planners. I had no idea this existed. So it was really cool. And I thought, you know what? I can do that too. Why not? Right. And then I found this whole big community online of planners and people um, promoting positivity and helping each other. And it was like, I just felt like I fit in. So that is how planning with Bumble was born. Okay. Erin Bohannon on YouTube asks, what were the first Mambi products you purchased that made you fall down the rabbit hole? Um, stickers. You know, like I said, the rainbow value pack, the watercolor, I think like planner basics. I started to collect stickers very rapidly. Um, at first I just thought, oh, I only need a couple packs. You know, I picked the ones that seem most versatile. And then like I started looking at 
people's posts online and like YouTube videos. And I was like, I need that. And I need that. And I need that. And then my pile kept growing and I was like, I'm getting out of control, but you, you guys know how that goes. Okay. Arts Lugia on Instagram asks, how long did it take to find your style? I don't like my spreads or I never like my spreads. Um, it took like, I don't know, probably about three months until I kind of got into the groove. Uh, it, it's like style is always evolving. So my style is different now than it was even probably six months ago. Like it just changes all the time. You get different ideas and you it kind of goes in whatever way it's gonna go. Uh, don't hate your spreads. Don't ever hate them because you know what? They're yours and they are like a reflection of your style and it'll, it'll get, you'll get there. It'll evolve. You'll change, you'll grow and you'll find your groove. I promise. Okay. Squeeze the day plans on Instagram asks, what has been your least favorite spread? So I went through my planners and I tried to figure that out. There was a lot, there's a lot of them I don't really like that much, but I'd say since I started using the Happy Planner, which was in May, I think, May 2018 is when I started the Happy Planner or April, something like that. Um, this is probably my least favorite. I know it's not bad, you guys, but I think because it has like brown here and like I wasn't I don't like the boxes I don't like my writing here or anything so it just isn't um it's not something I really like there's a couple other ones I don't like but that's probably the worst one okay Pauline and Vanez Valenzuela Aqualazan I'm sorry Pauline I know I really butchered that um anyway she asks do you always plan your spreads? Where do you get your inspiration and ideas from? Um, no, I do not always plan my spreads. Sometimes if I'm like in the shower, I'll be, or like laying in bed at night, I'll just sit there and think, hmm, like what can I do this week? Like I have no ideas, what can I do, what can I do? Um, but usually what happens is I sit down, like I don't usually think about it until like I'm sitting down to start planning. And then I will flip through some sticker books. I'll find a sticker that appeals to me and I'll just take it from there. I'll either, I, I, I'll like go with like a color theme from that sticker. Sometimes I use the color story book if I'm really struggling, but um, yeah, like I, I look at the stickers and I pick a sticker or stickers that I like and then it just kind of moves on from there and I just take it away from there. I don't know. I don't know. I never really, I always think that it's not going to work out and somehow in the end it always does. So sometimes I will pick a color combo. Like sometimes I will say, okay, this week I'm just going to do blue and yellow and then I'll just find a bunch of blue and yellow stickers. Other times it's like a holiday or um, an event that's going on, like somebody's birthday, or sometimes it's like a fun national holiday, like watermelon day or pretzel day or something like that. Uh, yeah, so that's really how I do it. Okay, Gerber Anderson on Instagram asks, what do you do when you are struggling with inspiration? Um, like I said, sometimes I use the Color Story sticker packs, like there's three of them, and if you take one like theme in that book and just use those stickers it's all going to coordinate and it's all going to match so those weeks that you see me using the color story are usually weeks that i don't have any ideas and i'll just kind of go for it sometimes i also just take one sticker book and i say okay i'm just going to use that one sticker book and that's it and it usually works out because in in the sticker books like all of the stickers are pretty much coordinating in that one book so you don't really have too many issues matching. Um, and then other times I'll just decide to use a color combo. That's it. All right. Re Renee B creates on Instagram asks, what's your favorite planning memory or story that touched your heart? Um, my favorite planning memory is probably the day that I got chosen to be on the happy planner squad. Um, it was a really, really or really low time. So my husband passed away last June. 
I got accepted onto the squad in May. And so obviously things were going not well at home. Um, he was getting much, much sicker. I was just struggling, um, like emotionally and physically, everything like it was a struggle. So when I heard about the Happy Planner Squad, that it existed and that, and when they put out the open call, I worked my ass off. Like I worked so hard. If you know me, you know that I do everything 150,000% when I'm obsessed with something. So I did, I worked for weeks on that application, like every single night I was working on that. And uh, so when they announced the squad, um, I got an email and I just, like, you have no idea. Cause finally, finally it was like, it's something, it gave me hope, you know, like something for me, something I accomplished and something happy when there was nothing else happy in my life right then. And uh, that was a great, a great day. Like that just, I don't know, it just made me feel awesome. And so another, another favorite planner memory was when I went to Happy Planner Boot Camp in California. And then that was a bad time too. I was grieving. He had just passed away a couple months before that. And, uh, but all of us got together and we went out to California and I got to meet everybody. Like that was the coolest part, just meeting the squad, meeting Stephanie Fleming and Hannah and Kayla, like everybody was so, so nice and supportive. And uh, it just, it was a really great time. Um, we got to tour the Mambi offices and go to Disneyland and out to dinner and all that kind of stuff. It was just a great time a great memory that I will always cherish and I'll always be grateful to the Happy Planner for, for bringing us out there. It was a good time. Okay, Mary Jo Planner on Instagram asks, if you could create a theme for a planner, what would it be? I don't know. Like I was thinking about this and I don't have any ideas. I mean, everything's pretty much been done. Maybe pets, but I don't, I don't know if I'd buy it if it was pets because it might be stupid. I don't know. I don't really have any ideas. I'm sorry. I love florals, but there's a bunch of those already. Okay, Mom Run Craft on Instagram. Hi, April. She says, how do you write so straight in your planner without lines? Well, I don't really have like any tips because I was just born being able to do this. Like um, my strength is just handwriting and art and that kind of stuff. Like I've always been able to draw straight lines, to draw perfect circles, all that kind of stuff, um, right in straight lines. And it just comes naturally to me. So I can't, like, I know that if you practice at it, you'll get better, but I've never had to practice at it because it just is something I was born with. Now, if you ask me to throw a softball accurately or catch a ball or like hit a ball or, do anything sports related? Like, no, I'm not coordinated in the least, but I can draw the heck out of a, a straight line. Okay, Joyce Chang on Instagram says, please help me. I'm spending too much money on stickers and planner stuff, and I hoard them. <sighs> Joyce, me too, me too. I'm sorry, I'm an enabler, so I've been enabling you to buy all these stickers and stuff. If you watch my YouTube videos, Joyce, you're being enabled to buy this stuff because I have it and I love it and all. So, so it, I have no advice for you, except maybe stop watching my videos. <laughs> I don't know. Detailberry69 on Instagram asks, I have lots of planners and want to use them all. What? Sorry, it's very hard to see right now. What things do you keep in your different planners? So I have five planners. I have a big happy planner, which I use for my catch-all. I have a social media planner, which I use for planning like YouTube, Instagram, that kind of stuff. I have a wellness planner that I use for my food and my exercise and my mental health. And then I have a mini, which I throw in my purse 
just for like an overview. And then I have my recipe planner, which I may, I like do one recipe page a week. And then by the end of the year, I'm hoping to get 52 recipes. So those are the ones I use. I know people use them for different things as well. I sometimes have trouble keeping up with just the ones that I have, so I can't add any more. Costanz on Instagram asks, all-time favorite sticker book? I know you love colorful boxes, but what is your all-time favorite? Um, yeah, so, so colorful boxes is my all-time favorite. <laughs> um, if I have to pick one that's not colorful boxes, Happy Illustrations is freaking awesome. That's one of the new ones. I love that one. Like, there's just these whimsical, cool little illustrations in there. They're fun, they're bright colors. It's not for everybody, obviously. I love it though. So that's probably my second favorite at this point. Okay, Bye Bye Phone Bill Sim Sales, whoa, on YouTube, asks, if you had to choose one planner and one sticker book to only use, what would they be? Um, probably the big happy planner, the Boho Dreams, and colorful boxes. Are you surprised? <laughs> Apricot Tree Planning on YouTube asks, your spreads are so composed. Do you have a background in design? Any rules you follow? I don't have a background in design. I have a psychology degree. And thinking back, I really should have gone into design. Like that is where my strengths lie. So I don't know why I didn't think of that, but I just, I just never did. So as far as rules go, um, no, I don't have any rules. The only thing, and if you watch my videos, you'll see like that I balance. So for me, it's like all about balance. So if I have one color on one side of the page, I need to put that same color on the other side of the page, but like in a different spot, not at the same level. And then if I have like one type of sticker, like maybe like a bit, like a quote, I tend to put a quote on the other side. So it balances it all out. Um, I also really pay attention to color combos and try not to have any clashing colors, but those are the only rules I really follow. And I don't really think of them. They just come naturally to me at this point. Yvette Rodriguez on YouTube asks, would you ever be interested in trying other planners? For instance, the new Hobonichi. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not really interested in that. Like I have finally found planner piece and I know everybody's searching for planner piece, right? But um, I love the Happy Planner and I don't have any need personally to branch out and use something else for my personal use. Now I might try different things to show you guys how to use them. Uh, that's a possibility. But for me personally, in my, like how I organize my life, the happy planner is like 100% me. I may try like a dashboard layout or something at some point, but everything's kind of working for me right now. So I don't really want to mess with it. But yeah, I will probably be doing different types of planner videos at some point just to show you guys ideas. It's a reading thing on YouTube asks, do you ever use non Mambi products for your planner? Um, yes, I have used non Mambi products and I will use them. Uh, like certain stickers, certain washi tape, sometimes I'll use none. To see, the thing is I just really like their stuff. And I know like you guys are like, well, you're on Happy Planner Squad, like it's your job to promote them. Kind of, but we don't have to like, for the squad, our only, we can use anything we want. The only requirement is that when we submit a project for the Happy Planner, which, which they share on their Instagram once a month, that has to be all Happy Planner products. The rest of the time we can do whatever we want. Um, but I really do mean it when I say like, those are the highest quality products in my mind. Like I love them the best. And so that's why I use them all the time. Uh, Will I use other stuff? Yeah, I just got a whole bunch of stuff at Go Wild that is non Happy Planner. And yeah, I'm sure I'll use some of that in future videos. Patty Cake on YouTube asks, do you think you will ever memory plan? Um, yeah, I actually bought two memory, well, I bought one memory planner and then I got another one from the Happy Planner. 
and I bought a Canon selfie printer. So I have everything in place. Honestly, it's just been a time thing for me. I just haven't had the time to get into it. And, but I want to, so I, and I know you guys want to see stuff, different stuff. So I will be doing that. So it's just a matter of time. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Keisha Dickens on YouTube asks, would it be possible to see a flip through of your 2018 planners? Yes, I actually already did one. So head to my flip through playlist. I'll try to remember to link it in the description box below, but if I didn't look in the flip through playlist because you will find it there. Cindy Harrington Caton on Facebook asks, what do you do when you really need a sticker, when you really need a certain sticker and you don't have it and you don't want it drawn? Not sure I understand the question. Um, if I don't have the sticker and I don't want to draw it, I just don't use the sticker. I don't know. Like I have so many stickers that I don't really need to figure that out. But I guess like they do have stickers that you can print online. I, I did that do that in the very beginning when I didn't have a lot of stickers. So there's that possibility. And uh, like I don't I don't know what else. Sorry, <laughs> Pauline and. On Facebook, sorry, Pauline, your name is difficult. Asks, can you please do a flip through of your first quarter? Sure, I can do that. Um, so I'll try to remember to do that like this coming week. Tara Glover Desell on Facebook asks, can you tell us more about what Go Wild is? I've heard a few planner babes talking about it. Um, I did do a Go Wild video. I just got back this week. So head on over to, what, what playlist did I put that in? I don't know. I'll try to remember to link that in the description below. But if you look at my recent videos, it's like one of the last ones that I did. Anyway, um, it's a planner conference. This time there was 1,400 people there. We went to Vegas. We had a ball, you guys. Like there's speakers and you get swag and we had parties and like just hung out with a lot of people got to meet so many people so yeah it's a really good time and I would definitely recommend going Lachelle Black Barbie on YouTube asks can you please make a video explaining the different types of planners planner layouts and planner lingo for us beginners happy planner related of course yeah I could do that I know Heather Kell did one of those videos um, a while ago back and uh, but I've never done one so that's a good idea and I will put it on my list. Okay, you guys, now we have personal questions. Yes, personal questions about me. Okay, Plan With Kelly on Instagram asks, are you a teacher or were you in the past? Nope, I've never been a teacher. My daughter, Allie, is gonna be a teacher. Um, she's student teaching next semester, so that's cool. But no, I've never been a teacher. I was a stay-at-home mom for 16 years. So we actually had four kids, so we really couldn't, I couldn't work. I just couldn't afford to work. So, um, so yeah, I do have a psychology degree um, and I started going for my master's a couple of different times, but life got in the way and I just didn't finish. Make it a plan on Instagram asks, can you tell Bumble I said she's a good girl? Of course. However, she's outside right now, so, and she's not bugging me, so, like, you guys should be happy. I know you want to see Bumble. Maybe I'll bring her in at the end. I don't know, but you guys should be happy that she's not making lots of noise because she's playing in the yard, but I will make sure I tell her that you said that. Diary of Kinder Life on Instagram asks, planner meetup in the Philly area? Yes, 100%. I know I said this, like, two months ago, and I still haven't done anything about it, but... I'm going to. So I live in Chester County. If you, if anybody's in the Philly area, keep an eye on my Instagram because that's where I will announce that I'm having a planner meetup around me. So it'll be in the Chester County area, uh, probably at like a Joann's or something or a Michael's, but I'm working on that. I've just been so busy, you guys. I just have not had time. So keep an eye out though, because I think probably like within the next month or so, a uh, month and a half, We'll, we'll get that done. Renee B. Creates on Instagram asks, what are your favorite movies and TV shows? Um, my favorite movie, I can't think of any specific movies that I like the best, but I do love thrillers and I love chick flicks. So, <laughs> um, and as far as TV goes, I do have a 
a few favorite TV shows like Lost is like such a great show, right? Um, Dexter and then Parenthood and Gilmore Girls. I know those are like two totally separate genres, but I love both of those. So yeah, check those out if you haven't already. Sally S on YouTube asks, how did you survive having two sets of twins? The hell if I know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, somehow I did. I repressed a lot of those like early memories that were, I had four kids in diapers at one time. Like, I just don't know how I did it. But I have four wonderful young adults now and uh, they're amazing. So I must have done something right. Okay, Ratbag113 on YouTube says, I didn't realize you had two sets of twins. I have one set. They are only 10 months old. Congratulations. Uh, my question, is there four twin related? How did you stay organized and get out of the house when they, wait, get out of the house with the kids? Um, I didn't. So I'm going to be totally honest with you here. I've never been organized. Like I have always been an organized wannabe. So I buy the totes, I buy the labels, I do all of that stuff. I get very super excited about it. And then I organize everything. I spend days, weeks, months, and then like, it all goes to hell. Like really, it just does. And, um, but especially when they were little because I had four little kids and a lot of stuff toys everywhere, you know, it just, I, I wasn't organized. And as far as getting out of the house, like I did get out of the house as much as I could, but when they were really little, it was super hard. I mean, for toddlers, right? Like for, well, toddlers, babies. So, so I do have a memory of that. And I remember going to the grocery store and I don't know how many times I did this, but I remember going to the grocery store and I had all four kids with me. I was by myself. So I, I would put Michael in the, in the seat in the cart and then Kaylee in the actual cart with the groceries. And then I would have a front pack with Allie in it and I'd have a backpack with Heather in it. And I'd walk around the store like with these four kids and the looks I got were funny. But I mean, you know, I needed milk and bread, so had to go once in a while, but it was, it was crazy. So how were you able to focus energy on me time to plan while dealing with the anxiety and grief of caregiving? Um, it was really hard. Well, that whole thing was hard, but as far as planning, I would plan at night when my husband was asleep and he would go to sleep early and I would spend hours like planning. That's what I did every single night after I discovered this hobby. And the thing is, it became kind of like my meditation. It became my salvation. Um, I know that sounds so dramatic, but it saved me. Um, it saved me from horrible depression and anxiety. I mean, I still had those, of course, but it saved me from it getting to like a disaster point. You know what I mean? Because I would sit and I would like draw and I would use my stickers and I would do hand lettering and it just somehow eased the, the pain a little bit. Of course, not a lot, but a little bit. It helped. It really, really helped. So I made a point to do it like every day. I was doing it every day and I was only using one planner. So I was being like, just like stickering it up pretty much every day. Um, and it helped. So if you're going through something like that, if you are a caregiver or if you are going through a super hard time in your life, like don't give up with the planning thing um, because it's a creative outlet. And that is what I needed to get through. So that's what I did. Tara Glover Dissel on Facebook asks, what does the tattoo on the inside of your left forearm say? So here's what I like to tell people that it says, mistake. <laughs> it doesn't really say mistake, but 
it's a huge mistake. I, it, I was coming out of a divorce, like I was getting divorced and it was like, I'm a single woman, like I am going to um, enjoy my life. So I'm gonna get a tattoo that says, joie de vivre, joy of life in French. So that's what it says. And um, it's a horrible tattoo. I don't know if you can see it, but like it's, I didn't research the guy enough who did it. It's blurry. It's like, I don't know, you can't read it. Everybody's always asking me what it is. I would love to get it removed, but it just like, um, it's expensive and it takes a long time. And so I'm gonna live with it for now. I might get it removed someday. I also have one on my ankle that's my kid's initials in like a design that I designed. And I actually really like that one. That one turned out really well, but uh, getting a second one was a dumb idea. Okay, Sai Kashika on YouTube asks, what is your day job? Um, well, I only work part-time right now. I work Wednesdays and Fridays. I work for a realtor and I am a new listing coordinator, which means that I pretty much uh, go to the house. Like if he's gonna list a new house, I go to the house, I measure, I take notes, I deal with the client, like give them advice on like a little bit of staging, not much. And then I come back to the office, I write the description, I put it on the MLS, all that kind of stuff. And then I hand it over to like the next person. What I used to do, I, full I used to do full time before my husband got sick was uh, I was a real estate transaction coordinator, which, which is basically taking the whole transaction from new listing to closing and coordinating deadlines and dealing with mortgage and title companies and inspectors and um, like kind of like a liaison between like the, the sellers and the, the buyer's agents and all that kind of stuff. So it was a varied job. It was fun for a while. I got a little bored uh, after I mastered it. It was a hard job, but um, so I was kind of ready for something new. And then after uh, my husband passed away, I wasn't going to go back to that office, but I decided I needed to do something. I mean, obviously I need to do something. I have to make a living. Um, but I was fortunate enough to be able to take a little bit of time off. So I do that Wednesdays and Fridays, and then I am working to make YouTube a side income on the other days. And I work my ass off. I mean, I really, really do. So pretty much full-time YouTube all the rest of the days, including weekends sometimes. Um, and probably only making like 25 cents an hour on YouTube or something ridiculous like that. But I am working hard at it so that it can become more of an income. So right now it is a nice little side income, but it's not enough. So that's what I'm doing the rest of the time. Jennifer Pace on YouTube asks, how old is Bumble? She is two years old. She just turned two in April, April 10th. Sherry Ann Luna on YouTube asks, I know you always have a spot for gratitude in your planner, but other than that, what are some practical tips for how you intentionally choose joy when the going gets tough? That's a really good question um, because there are three things that I do. So I ask myself three questions when things are really, really bad or when I'm down or depressed or whatever. Um, number one, what are you grateful for? What am I grateful for? I know you said besides that, but gratitude is like the most important thing I feel like because there's always something to be grateful for. I don't care if you've got nobody. If it, you, I don't care, like there's always something you're grateful for, like your health or you have a roof over your head or um, a pet or whatever. Like there's always, always something to be grateful for. The second thing I ask is how could it be worse? I'm sorry for the squeaking. <laughs> um, so how could things be worse? And it doesn't matter how bad things are. It really doesn't because they can always, always, always be worse. Always. Um, even if you have a debt, like even though my husband died, it, it was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Um, it still hurts really, really bad, but things could always be worse. Like, I have my family, um, I have friends, I have, like I said, I have a roof over my head, I, I'm healthy right now, like everything 
you know, I've got you guys. I, there's, it can be worse because anything can be taken away from you at any time. And I know this because it happened to me. So it can always be worse. And the third question I always ask myself is, what good can come out of this? What lesson can be learned? That's like kind of a two-part question. So what is something good that can come out of this situation? And again, I don't care what it is. Um, even when someone dies, there's something that you can take away from that, something that's good or a lesson that can be learned every single time. Um, as far as my husband dying, like, um, something good that came out of that is that I am much more compassionate than I was. I have experienced something that not many people have experienced. So I know what it's like to deal with terminal illness. I know what it's like to deal with, um, like a handicap, you know, and, and have, Sorry, I'm getting, okay. I expect to get emotional right now. Hmm. Um, I understand like people who are going through these things now and like it's made me a better person, I think. And it's made me a stronger person, you know? I'm stronger than I was before, a lot, a lot stronger. So something good that come, can come out of any situation. There really, really is. So if you're dealing with anything really shitty right now, um, stop and ask yourself those questions. And I promise you, it will change your perspective even like a little bit. And if you keep practicing that and practicing positivity, like it does change your brain. It really, really does. Okay, back to happier things. Um, Brooklyn 80 on YouTube asks, what other hobbies have you had or do you have? Um, right now I don't really have any, too many other hobbies except for reading and maybe working out. Like those are kind of my two hobbies because I spend so much time on YouTube and Instagram and stuff like all that stuff that I don't have a lot of time to do other things right now. Um, but that's because I get obsessed with hobbies and I put like 110%, not my, more like 100 and 50,000% into what I'm doing. Um, but previous hobbies I have had are scrapbooking, um, extreme couponing. I did that for a while. I had like an extra freezer in my basement and like extra shelves and I just got hundreds and hundreds of dollars of free stuff all the time. I took that to an extreme, obviously. Um, sweepstakes, I used to enter sweepstakes back when like mail-in sweepstakes were a thing. I don't know if they still are but I was like, like obsessed with that. And I won all sorts of stuff like TVs and like makeovers and like flooring and all sorts, like all sorts of stuff I won. And I kept getting stuff in the mail, it was super fun, but um, I took that to an extreme as well. Um, painting plates. So I used to paint plates and like coat racks and stuff in these like whimsical, children's kind of like, I don't know, some of it was for kids, but some of it wasn't. And I actually had like a couple of home parties where I sold some of my stuff. And I did that for a while. Like I did that like every single day for maybe six months and then I got burned out, but <laughs> maybe a year. Um, I used to do calligraphy. I used to actually do that for money. And um, let's see, uh, sorry, I'm just like, I wrote some notes on this because I always forget. Uh, back in 2008, when YouTube was like first starting, I actually had a YouTube channel and it was like a mommy vlog. So it was kind of like a comedy thing. It was called Tiny Goals. And I would take um, like a goal in the beginning of the week and I would talk about what I would accomplish that week. And then I would do another video at the end of the week telling people what I did and like showing them. And it was always kind of like comedy. It was kind of funny. I ended up getting on my local news. Uh, they did like a lifestyle segment on me. And um, yeah, I had quite a following. I was starting to get really quite a following going. And I had actually Inside Edition called me. They wanted me on and it didn't work out. But 
Uh, so I was getting somewhere and then I used too many copyrighted songs and my channel got yanked, you guys. It got yanked. So I didn't even watch YouTube for like, my God, like six years because I was so upset about that. I lost all my subscribers. I lost my videos and I didn't get them back. So lesson learned, don't ever use copyrighted music on your videos. It's a bad idea. Okay, now we are at YouTube Instagram squad questions. All right. So let's see. Yoli Montavo on Instagram asks, can, how can you merge or separate your personal life from your social media business? It's hard. I mean, I feel like in order to engage with your followers and your subscribers, you need to put yourself out there. And so I feel like I need to let you guys in to my personal life because in that way I'm being more authentic and more genuine and I feel like people are more willing to relate to you that way and then more willing to um, engage and follow you on social media. That's at least my thought. That's how I feel about other people. If they're just putting stuff out there randomly and not talking about anything else besides what they're doing, I feel like it's just a little bit cold and impersonal. So I try to kind of bring that in. I know in the beginning I didn't and it's kind of gotten a little bit better and now with this Q&A video you certainly are knowing a lot more about me than you probably even wanted to know but um but yeah I think it's important so I don't separate. Plans by Mandy on Instagram asks how did you grow your planner Instagram any tips for newbies? Um like I was just saying before be genuine kind of engage um also you got to work on your photos they need to be bright they need to be clear that's really important. I do have a video on how to edit your photos for Instagram. I do need to update that because I changed it a little how I do it, but photos, obviously the quality is super important. So there's tons and tons of blogs and YouTube videos and Instagram posts and all that on that information that you can find online. Uh, also, I think it's important to well, first of all, post regularly, use hashtags, use like I, when I started, I looked at other planners and what hashtags they were using. And then I used those hashtags, um, and other hashtags, but so, um, but what are you doing? Oh, uh, come here. Come here. You don't want to come here. Okay, fine. Participate in challenges make lots of friends, you know, like use Instagram stories, comment on people's posts, comment on their stories. Uh, all that kind of stuff is super important for getting like, <laughs> she's, she's butt popping on me. That's what I call butt popping when she pop, pop, pop. <laughs> come here, come here. <laughs> Say hello. Hello. <laughs> um, so all that stuff is important. Also, I, I do promote my, my video. Oh, is there something outside? Something you're looking at? I do promote my videos and my Instagram posts. So like I'll go to Facebook groups and promote it. I'll promote it on, in, on Pinterest and stuff like that. So that's important too. Cindy Lee Caton on Instagram asks, do you get paid to post things on Instagram like you do on YouTube? No, uh, not yet. I have been paid in product a couple times. I do have a lot of companies reaching out to me, asking me if I want to try their products and then review them or promote them on Instagram. But I've only done that a couple of times. I hope to get to the point where I will get paid instead of getting paid in product. But I think you need, I would say, probably upwards of like 50,000 followers before you get to that point. I think, but I haven't gotten there yet. Haley's Happy Plans and Emmy Altman on YouTube basically want to know why I decided to start a YouTube channel. I decided to start a YouTube channel basically because when I applied for the squad, I told them I was going to start a YouTube channel. Um, you don't have to have a YouTube channel if you're applying for the Happy Planner squad, but I decided to do it because I told them and also because... Um, it looked fun. <laughs> that's really, I mean, that's really the only reason. I, I knew I could make money at it, but I knew that it would take a while. And my, when I started YouTube, the purpose wasn't to make money. I discovered after I got monetized that it can make money. And then 
I started putting out more videos. But when I first started YouTube, it was literally just for fun and for also getting more followers to Instagram. I thought that would bring me more followers and I don't know. I just thought it would be like interesting and fun. And, and I did YouTube before, so it just made sense to me to kind of do that like as a hobby. Sandra's plans on Instagram asks, what app do you use to edit your pictures for social media? I use PicTap Go and I use Facetune too. And those are the only ones that I use. And like I said, there is a video for that and I will be doing an updated video for that soon so that you can kind of see my process. Blog else on Instagram asks, how are you so awesome? <laughs> Thanks, Natalie. <laughs> Um, and then she says, but seriously, what are your photo taking and editing tips? So basically just using those apps. Also, it's really important to take the photos someplace where there's natural light and not directly by a window. I made that mistake in the beginning. Like I thought I needed to take the photos right where there was the most light, but then I discovered that gets the most shadows. So you need to go in like the middle of a room even where you think it looks too dark, like when I take photos, I take it in the middle of my living room and it's not very light, but somehow it turns out better than if I do it by a window. So it took me about six to eight months to discover that little nugget of information. <laughs> Aaron Bohannon on YouTube asks, was planning with Wallace ever considered? No, no, <laughs> it was not because, um, First of all, planning with Bumble sounds cuter, I think, than planning with Wallace. Plus, like, if, if it said planning with Wallace, like, doesn't that make it seem like my name's Wallace? And that's just weird, because then you'll think I'm a guy. I don't know. Um, also, Wallace is just too damn fat. So, like, if I had him in my, in my lap all the time for videos, it would be hard for me to do anything, because he'd be in my way. <laughs> or he'd jump up and, like, lay on my planner. You guys know he loves to do that. So... So no, I never really thought of that. Okay, Carolyn Brown on YouTube asks, what process did you take to become part of the Happy Planner Squad? Did you have to become, did you have to have a YouTube channel to be considered? Um, I did just say that, no, you don't have to have a YouTube channel. And I will be doing a video about this, I think. I know according to Allie just did one on her YouTube channel. I would like to like kind of give my two cents about the Happy Planner Squad as well because applications are coming up on, I think they're announcing the open call on May 13th, which is like coming up really quickly. So I will be giving tips and stuff in another video on applying. Um, my but like for now, my main tip is like, just be yourself. I know that sounds so like, I don't know, just boring and like stupid, but I really mean it. Like just be yourself. Do you, you know what I mean? Like keep your own style. Don't try to be anybody else because they're going to see right through that. And they don't want like, ton of people that are the same. They want people who are different and showing how to use their planners in different ways. So, uh, so be yourself, work on your Instagram. So they do look at that work. If you don't have a planner Instagram, start one and be really, really careful about the quality of your photos, especially the ones that you submit in your application. Because even if you have the best spreads ever, if your photos are terrible, if they're dark, if they're blurry, um, if they're not like pleasing to the eye, then they're not going to pick you no matter how good you are. So that's like really, really, really important. That's probably the most important tip is to have really good photos. Also make sure that you are already promoting like positivity and and, and that your Instagram doesn't have any negativity in it. So yeah, those are my tips for now, but I know I will be doing a video on it and I'll go into more in depth and I'll probably share my application with you guys and, and I'm going to tell you what I wrote in mine last year and maybe that'll like help you. I don't know, not that you're gonna copy it, but maybe it'll give you some idea of what they're looking for. So I will be making a video on that probably next week.
Okay, Deb R on YouTube asks, what do the squad projects consist of? Isn't it how you use your stickers, your layouts for your creative ideas for marketing? Are the products do projects do weekly? No. Um, so the projects are once a month. I have a due date every month. Actually, mine's coming up like next week. I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, so they're once a month and basically you can do whatever you want. You can do like a regular spread. You can do a cute little list. You can do whatever, a memory plan, like a recipe, whatever you want. And you just like take a bunch of pictures of it, write up a little blurb and send it to Hannah. And, um, and then she decides when it's going to go out in what order and all that. But that's really all you have to do. And you have to make sure that the only products you use in that project are Happy Planner products. And that's really it. It's not that hard. I mean, they send me so much stuff, like so much stuff. So I feel like it's totally spoiled because what I give back to them is, you know, a pro a project once a month is not that hard. So, but, but they just send us boxes and boxes and boxes of products. And it's, it's really cool getting those in the mail. Yeah, that's fun. Molly S on YouTube asks, have you always been into technology and posting on social media? I feel so far behind. This is all new to me. I did too, Molly. Like I really did. I did not have an Instagram. Like I had a personal Instagram, but I barely posted on it. And I never had like a planner Instagram until last year. And, um, never, I don't post much on Facebook or anything like now I do. Well, now I do like in planner groups and stuff, but, uh, you don't have to have, you don't have to be into technology and have like a whole social media following and all that to do any of this. Um, but so no, I never really have been good at technology. I've always been like, I can go online and everything, but, uh, I don't know. I guess now that I have been on the squad now I am, I guess, a social media influencer. So I am on social media like 2000% more than I was like at this time last year. <laughs> I'm on I'm on a lot. Uh, mostly now promoting my YouTube channel and stuff like that. But, but no, I had to learn everything too. So don't feel behind. I mean, just start using it and you'll get the hang of it. It's not that hard. It's just... It just takes a little bit, but you'll get into the swing of it and then you'll be like social media queen like everybody else. This is the last question. You guys made it to the end if you're still here. <laughs> Lacey Atkins on YouTube asks, you mentioned that you would like to be self-employed by the end of the year. What income streams are you pursuing to make that happen? Um, I have a lot of ideas. Ones I've been pursuing not a whole, like I haven't been pursuing that many things. I have ideas of things to pursue. I have just been so busy and I have to figure out how to block my time so that I don't work so hard on these YouTube videos and I take more time to figure out like the rest of it too. So I'm working on that. But as far as ideas, I want to have some planning with Bumble merch, uh, I have a couple ideas for that, but nothing like in the works yet. So I have to start working on that. Let me know in the comments below if you would buy Planning with Bumble merch, because I think that would be super fun. I don't quite know what I would do yet. Maybe like t-shirts, maybe um, mugs or like water bottles or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I think it would be really fun to do. So that's a possibility. I have also considered like starting to sell stickers or designs or something with lettering, um, all of that. I don't know. Uh, I have some ideas, but again, just trying to find the time to do it. Also, I want to get back into my blog. I know I said that months ago. I still have not. I have planningwithbumble.com that's just sitting there. It is not doing much of anything. 
If I get more into my blog, I will then get more into affiliate marketing and that is a money maker as well. I, I want to have a lot of different passive, passive streams of income so that I can work on other things while I'm making money at these streams. And I think that that is a way to free yourself up for other cool stuff and still make money on the side. So that's my plan. I don't know if it's gonna be by the end of the year. I would love to quit my real estate job by the end of the year, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm gonna get there. Uh, uh, we'll see. I don't know. So that is it. You have gotten through all the questions. Thank you so much for submitting all of those. I had a really good time answering this stuff and um, I hope that you guys had fun listening to me. I don't know if you got anything out of it, but let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see more of my face. I'm gonna try. I'm just a little bit like introverted and I don't know. It's just not what I'm used to, but trying to come out of my shell a little bit, so. That's it for now. I said I would bring Bumble back in, but she's outside. She's not making any noise, so she's having fun digging or eating bugs or whatever she does. So I'm not I'm not bringing her back in. So have a great day and a wonderful week, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.